You are listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. The potato peelings in the sink did not turn into vodka as I had hoped. I only start to need a drink. After the liquor stores have closed I heard you changed your name again But don't you change your hair It was the only thing I liked about you In the end La, la, la. Hey, this is next week's podcast, which is actually minutes after the last podcast ended, because Alex O'Meara is still here, as is Chad Shank just shuffling in, looking looking bedraggled. <laughs> <laughs> you have the faraway eyes tonight. I had to argue with myself a few times to make it. <laughs> Well, I'm always glad when you do, but if you're if you're even nervous about coming, sometimes they go. Maybe that's the best thing to do. Well, I'm not. I'm, I don't get. I'm not nervous about coming. I just don't want to really be around people. I was just around you guys two nights ago, and then I still hate myself over that. So I'm waiting to. I have to space it out. Nice yeah, we we, we did that yesterday. We did uh, the round table of. Everyone was really shit faced, so everyone calls everyone else to make sure everyone's good. And it's yeah, still friends. Yeah, we. I, I especially you. If I, if no one else, I always remember to call you because I wake up in that same state of drunken terror. Of I made an asshole, and I've all my friends are gone, and they finally <laughs> left me, and they finally saw through they the saw, veneer. Yeah, that's exactly it. They saw through what I really am. <laughs> I just wanted to say, Chad, it's really nice to see you as well. It's good to see you, sir. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. I want to, cause I got a list of things I want to complain about. But before that, cause this is what I was talking about with Chad Shank and you never answered the question. The game is, this is how the game works. It's just finding two people that's difficult to choose between who you would rather day drink with. I went with Bukowski versus Hunter S. Thompson. Cause I like a slow burn day drink. I don't want to go straight to fucking crazy. <laughs> You don't want to do that kind of shit during the day. No, you want someone it's like, solid. It's the difference between uh, doing acid at night or doing acid during the day. It's completely different trips. One has more light. <laughs> How's our volume, by the way? I have no idea. Can you hear yourself? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? What? Yeah, I can. Yeah. I can. All right. Can you hear me? <laughs> what? Yes, I can hear okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Really Always well. When the way. sound man is a smart if, fuck. If he needs a sponsor, I'm uh, I'm smoking Chocolope <laughs> from the Green Pharmacy in Bisbee. Chocolope, which is uh, that's it's the pop off vodka. <laughs> it is definitely uh, bottom shelf of the weed store. <laughs> Bingo asked him yesterday. So, what kind do you smoke? Bingo's actually she would be a great interviewer if you could catch her in her moments. And there's a certain drink. Like yep. the old episode where they say, oh, that's where you become Professor Barney. When Barney gets to a certain level of drinks and knows everything, right. Bingo becomes, she wants to know everything about you, like Barbara Walters. And I'm like, you're a fucking fantastic host. She'll find the person no one's talking to and then just be so interested in everything about him and never not wanting to throw her story in there. What really? What's it like? <laughs> a, paleontolo- a paleontologist? What? What's that like? Did you have to go to school for that? And she's genuine. And get things out of people like a Howard Stern fashion. Right. You know, stuff they didn't plan on telling you. Yeah. She's no, she'll good totally draw them out just to make yeah. them feel more comfortable and have a better time. Yeah. But it's, it's like my stage hour. That's why I don't do two shows. I know exactly where to drink now <laughs> to hit that sweet spot. And, uh, yeah, you don't want to, the second show with Bingo. No, you're not. <laughs> You're, you're not answering any questions. Uh, I've been interviewed by Bingo a couple of times. It's fun. You're a paleontologist. <laughs> that must suck. <laughs> Fuck you and your paleo. 
no, she doesn't get like that. She just gets the uh, the big black charcoal eyes, and you know, Bingo's not at home anymore. <laughs> Michael Sam got fucking cut from the Rams. Big depression going into. He's the gay yeah, linebacker. That, I read Openly the story. gay. It there hurts others. when yeah, you develop a bit that you're so proud of. Hoping that that's gonna, you know, carry through the season, <laughs> and then it gets cut. I, the bit does not rely on him, but him being in the league, first of all, would have been so much fucking fun. And maybe he gets picked up by another team. I don't maybe. know. Yeah. But the bit. The Cowboys. I was if reading. nothing else, Michael Sam, you gave me a bit that I think will fucking yeah, it'll 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 carry to the next album. And we love you. And the fact that you fucking sacked that Johnny Football faggot. You know what? I'm I'm going to use the I I right. almost <laughs> dropped the word faggot. Just it's yeah, it, it's too mis too many of the wrong people use it the wrong way. And ever I still use it around the house as I do nigger when it, when you're here around black people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why is it back and on last- Twitter? <laughs> Why is there this backlash against this kid who hasn't even started yet? He's done nothing except been hyped. Who? Johnny Football? Yeah. He's a, he's a weasel face. You can profile people at a certain age. You know when someone's a rat face, weaselly douchebag. He does, that's his move is to show up, put his hands up and do the money sign when people are booing him. Like, yeah, I make money. Well, yeah, you're still, and he shows up at, like, there's, I saw footage of him showing up at some frat party in Austin and then being booed openly at the party and, like, just walking around. He's just a cocky fuck. <laughs> he's like, he should be a rapper. <laughs> he's that kind of, there's so something he, wrong with him. He's peaked at, like, 22? No, he hasn't peaked. He hasn't had his comeuppance yet. He hasn't had his major downfall and it was a beautiful erection driving thing to watch him get sacked by the first openly gay football player twice in a game. And I wanted to see that all season long. By uh, the way, I just want I just want to say a beautiful erection driving thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. I'm fucking I'm gay as shit. I'm gay as shit from Michael Sam. That's something I wanted to that's my that's my Bill Burr sports talk right off the top. <laughs> Fuck you, St. Louis Rams. You will suffer some horrific career ending injuries. Someone will be paralyzed on your team from the bad karma that you have now acquired from dumping Michael Sam, who did a fantastic job in preseason. All right, my preseason Super Bowl picks. That's right. I'm picking the Bengals over the Washington Redskins. I said it. Really? All right, that's the sports talk. Yeah, I was. You can't pick the obvious ones. Pick something weird. That way, you're a champion at the end of the year if it comes through. I'd have a job on ESPN. <laughs> uh, all right, notes, bah, bah, things. I was. I wanted to segue from something we were just talking about. I don't know if it was Hunter S. Thompson or what. We walked out of here. I, I had a great idea how to start this show. This is the Doug Stano podcast with Chad Shank and Alex O'Mara. I don't know, sir. What was it regarding? I don't know. All right. Something, uh, something, something you said. Something I wanted more of. More hey, of the Duma Hunter story S. Or, or, or. I just wanted to name drop. I wanted to say Johnny Depp five more times is really what I wanted to do. Because well, honestly, podcast. it's really what you want to do when you meet Johnny Depp is tell every single person. But what about when you and Johnny Depp watch football? <laughs> He's a Dolphins fan. This right. is my girlfriend. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. We'll just drop his name all the time throughout this podcast. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. This podcast sponsored by Johnny Depp <laughs> and his new movie, Mordecai, coming out sometime next year. Uh, so the, my fucking war with Citibank is what I wanted to get. Uh, that's why I wanted Chad here so badly because he shares the same hate. That morning hate when you don't have people to apologize to and call. You were just by yourself drunk. I wake up with that. And I've had the pleasure of having Citibank be my go-to guy. I got two credit cards from Citibank just for mileage. Like there's, there's cards you get that you get just for the mileage. And then you go, okay, after you spend $3,000, you get 50,000 miles. And then you go, oh, good. And then I cut up the card. So I keep track. 
Then I got rid of both of those cards. And evidently, I had like a $96 balance on one of them that I paid online to the different card. So I, I, I overpaid that. And so they said they, they were going to adjust it. But then somehow I still had $96 left over. And you, I'd get these robot calls saying, please call Citibank. This is not a sales call. Please call back. Any assistant can help you. And you call fucking India and India gets all your fucking information and what's your so and your full address. And I know, okay. And I give them, Oh, well, that's a business card. We have to transfer you. So that's the first 12 or 14 minutes. And then they get you to the business card. They go, Oh, this is in collections now. So, and you, then you fucking, I've already been through two people. And then you get to the third person and then they say, well, you didn't pay. And I go, what well, is, what's the account number? And they, I go, well, I did pay that. And then I realize I'm getting a check back every time I, I pay this. And then I get a check a week later from <laughs> Citibank for the amount I paid. And then I start getting collection calls again. And then I realize, wait, you're sending my money back to me and then keep me in collections. And then I have to go through the same process, only every time I'm more irritated. So by the time I get to the second guy, I, I'm saying everything he's going to... Okay, here's the last four of my social security. Here's my address. Here's the, the, here's my date of birth. Here's my mother's maiden name. And then they go, oh, you're, yes, let me guess. It's in collections now and I have to be on fucking hold again. And this repeated to the point where it used to be just a home phone and now then it got to over, over a month, maybe two months of this. Paid it four times. I have the checks out there. I took a picture of it with my cell phone of the checks they keep sending back to me and then keep putting me in collections. And then I'd say, I paid that already. We've been through this. This is, have you seen the movie Groundhog's Day? Cause it's exactly that where I'm like, I'm telling you exactly what's going to happen next. I know your next question. I'm answering it before you say it. And then you still disregard the fact that I told you, I, well, sir, you say you paid it, but there's still late charges that accrue. No, I, I paid it on the phone. This is daily. This was a month of oh my God. five days a week of talking to at least three different people. And then you try to not call someone a cunt <laughs> because, you know, that's the, the third. And you're going to have to start from scratch start again. again. And then the one of the last times, the guy, the third guy in India goes, hello, this is, this is Christopher. May I help you? I go, see, we start with a lie. Every time I call Citibank, the first statement you say is a lie. Don't say you're Christopher and don't say I haven't paid this fucking bill. So I, like I was overpaying it. So there would be no late charges. And if I owed charges, they'd nope, get another check. I get checks from Citibank for all the times I paid them the money that they, and they finally, I think it's done because the last person I got, after I told him on Twitter, we're, oh, this is it. Now we go to war. And unironically, <laughs> they texted, uh, tweeted back, uh, please DM us with your phone number. We would like to escalate your issue. I already is, is. Use the word I mean, escalate. Is, yeah. After I said, we're going to war, you say, we'd like to escalate. Jihad. Oh, yeah. So this last one said they, well, we can do it through a debit card over the phone. So hopefully that's it. But at the same time, I have no one to fucking yell at in the morning that deserves it. <laughs> I have to take it out on someone else. Repo man's always intense. Really? So anytime you have to like tweet, like those impotent tweets, airlines especially, because everyone like, fuck you, you know, whatever airline. And when I do it, I know it's just wasted rage because everyone does that. People, you have to understand. I get shit. Oh, you know what? You, all you entitled people bitching about the airlines. If it didn't fucking crash, then count your blessings and go fuck yourself. There's, there's people who do have that sense of entitlement when they fly that, you know, uh, the food, you yeah, know, uh, sure. Well, that's the, the, the most hackneyed premise in comedy is the bad food on airlines. The peanuts and the thing. And the, well, it yeah, used right. to be how bad the food was. Right. Then it was just the peanuts. Now everyone bitches that they don't get any food. You just fucking pack a sandwich, you asshole. I understand you people who think it, I fly for a living. Comics fly all the time. And we can't bitch about it on stage because it is a hackneyed, tired premise. Once you bitch about the airlines, Seinfeld it's been done. killed it. 
Yeah, Ellen DeGeneres, and yeah. oh, my yeah. seat can go, it has to be this far up, which I still pisses me off. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm about to be a million miler with Delta. I've flown over fucking this year, which is short. I've flown like 40,000 on United. You actually, you, you have flown miles to get miles, right? You, 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 you. To get status. To get, so you've, you've actually I'll take flown miles at the end of the trips. year. Like to this year, I started doing them at the beginning of the year. But not only around the world, but somewhere, just weird. Yeah, Australia, and Africa, without never, leaving, don't the leave an airport. Just fuck <laughs> and just fly wow. Africa to Amsterdam, back through Detroit and Vegas to <laughs> Salt Lake and home. Seventy-seven hours with fifty-seven in the air, and never left an airport. Nor was I ever curious what happened, might be outside of the Johannesburg, South Africa airport. I, I just, I they have a smoking bar. I know that. The, 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 red, the red lounge. Or yeah, something I've done called. Johannesburg. Yeah, it's not much. <laughs> yeah, but you can smoke. <laughs> so when I fucking tweet, there's a problem. It's not just because someone was crusty with me at the at, at checking my bags. The U.S. Airways sucks. That's not based on one experience like other people who go fuck you, U.S. Air, because yeah, your flight get delayed and you fly once every three years. To go see your fucking dumb cousin. Amateur. When I tweet that uh, there's a serious fucking issue. U.S. Airways has a lot of fucking, uh, uh, what do you call it when you get a speeding ticket? A lot of things on your license. <laughs> points? <laughs> points. Points on your, yeah, there's a, U.S. Airways sucks more shit. And again, you can't bitch about it on stage. So we get to hear about you bitch about it. Yeah, you get to hear me bitch about it. <laughs> On Twitter, where they consider it hate speech. This, have you seen that map of hate speech? What is that? In the, uh, Hang on. on Twitter. Oh, this is where people, the most hate hateful tweets come from. It's like, uh, what do you call really? it? Like, yeah. uh, Phoenix. If, you, if you look right there, there's a little there's a little blue spot by like Bisbee. I'd like to think it's a oh, it is. map it is, of yeah. the United yeah. States where the red that's, parts are. That's Chad's glowing head. <laughs> <laughs> Do you tweet a lot of hate? No, I don't tweet hardly anything. I never see you on Twitter. I think you think a lot of hate, so it shows <laughs> up. I, just... <laughs> I don't. I don't need to show my hand in public. <laughs> Chad, Chad shows up. Yeah, I, was ta- I, I I agreed to do this the other night drunk because I thought I was having court in the morning, but it's court tomorrow morning, so can't really get fucked up. I could not be fucked up at court. How have you ever... Uh, uh, That's pretty much the best place to be fucked up, by the way. Not for Chad. Oh, no. Have you ever had like a the incident other- in court? Have you ever... Because you seem like you can handle yourself in a, like a, an authority situation. Yeah, I've had an incident once uh, where I had to be physically restrained from a judge at his private quarters. But it was fucked up. It was to uh, sever the da- rights of my daughter's mother when she was little. And the chick didn't show up. She, her mother signed the subpoena, and then she didn't show up to court. So instead of ruling in my favor... The judge threw out the case, basically in her favor, and uh, I I lost it. I didn't know. I started climbing over the desk. <laughs> the lawyer had to drag me outside. <laughs> so, uh, but I didn't hurt anybody. And they, st- the lawyer fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pay him more. Yeah, a lot more. <laughs> I had to pay him more. Hey, sometimes it's good to over tip. <laughs> Especially your attorney. <laughs> like you say, it's just a matter of control, right? I just didn't control it anymore. <laughs> I did. I did say uh, something hateful the other day. I should talk about show my hand on on social media. But somebody stole my pressure washer off my front porch at my house. I live on a dirt road, dead end. Oh yeah, no, I've been there. Somebody fucking stole it. I'm still not over it. It's been a week and a half or two weeks, and I, every day I fucking I wait. I, I couldn't go outside for three days because every day I'd go to the front door. I would remember that my pressure washer was right there. And I was just seething, fucking homicidal mad, trying to figure out who it is. The neighbors had had some uh, shady people do some work on their house during the time that it happened. So I told my wife, go down and tell the neighbors that you want the phone number of the people that did their work. 
because we want some work done. The Adam Carolla move. Yeah, I need some work done. I don't know if you've seen nice. that show where no. he, he fucks with bad construction people. Yeah. But I, and because I wanted to find out who they were, where they live, so I'd go see if they, you know, stole my shit. She said, no. Said, Why not? She said, because you'll kill someone. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> So, anyways, I finally posted. Chad Shanks is the guy that when it, when that news story comes out, everyone's gonna go. Of course, we saw it coming. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever talk to that guy? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he seemed alright. He, he referred it to he, it all the time. We had squares on the date. <laughs> <laughs> so I posted something to the effect of is a is. Perusing the uh, classified ads looking for the motherfucker who stole your pressure washer, could that later be considered premeditation? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to, basically the only reason I did it was so that I publicly outed myself so I could cut myself off from the realistic thought that I kept having of, I'm going to find who this is and kill them. So that way, if I put it in public that I was joking about it, then now I can't go kill them because I'll oh, fucking... It's a psychological fucking that would be gauche. roadblocks. Yeah, if if <laughs> comedy could ever be held against you, like I, I, you always have that out as a comedian. You can say something completely real, but you're on the comedy stage, so he was kidding. <laughs> See? Uh-huh. Huh? Honk, honk. Oh. Floppy shoes. Kidding. <laughs> if, uh, all right. Every time there's dead air. Chelsea Handler. Or Courtney Love, day drinking. Courtney Love. Courtney Love. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. I'm going Courtney Love. Yeah. Even though she might get a little out of hand. Uh, I'm counting I on think, that. But yeah. she's a day drinking pro. What Chelsea Handler seems like she's still, it, it would take till nighttime before she yeah, lost that snotty cuntiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so no, I, yeah, I think, uh, all right, we're yeah, fucking, yeah. we get a round table on Courtney Love. Courtney Love, yeah. Courtney Love yeah. wins this round of day drinking. Bong, we bong. should be, we should do this podcast day drinking, but we can do this all the time. <laughs> Anytime there's dead air, you just come up. <laughs> I'm not, I, I'm not good at this game, but I, what about, uh, Tim Tebow or Michael Vick? Oh, Damn. definitely Tebow. If yeah, I, because if get I him day, looped at 8 a.m. Yeah. If I day drank yeah. with fucking Michael Vick, I if I drank any time with Michael Vick, it's you would make it three tonight. drinks before I start going fuck you. <laughs> like Alex, see that's a con Alex in, is that's a, a con in your book. That's a pro in my book. That's why I'm choosing. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> really, really, because you well, want that to happen. You want that thing to happen. Well, Alex, Alex is <laughs> this was the catalyst for the round of apology calls is because Alex oh, is this man. weird Catholic. We're not going to get into it again. <laughs> I don't want to. But, but we get into it every time we drink. Mm. Only this time it was like four on one, pounding Alex oh, about this man. weird... He just enjoys to believe in Catholicism despite all of its obvious flaws. It gives him some comfort to just believe that. But when Thank we get you for drunk, it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. But then we want to beat on you because it's stupid yeah, and you're a smart I'm a person. person Catholic, yeah. Yeah, but that's fun beat, busting your balls. Fucking three drinks. I don't even know if I get three drinks with Michael Vick. Where well, you go, you know what? Sometimes the fucking N word is all you got. Yeah. Because, you know, I can't hit you. You become a but guttural been, moron. Yeah. If you've been trained to fucking feel bad by that fucking mouth sound, I'm going to use it. Because I don't have jumper cables like you did with your fucking dogs. Oh, wow. Yes. So, Tim Tebow, I just give him shit like we give you yeah, about exactly. his dumb yeah, yeah. Jesus. Great. I'm Plus, the stand in for Tim Tebow. <laughs> it was a good, that's a fucking good call, though. Tebow versus Vic. All right. Good. All right. It's good. Seeing if I understood the game. You understand the game perfectly. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Mussolini or Hitler? I don't know enough about Mussolini because he kind of lived in the shadow of Hitler. I would Pol Pot. Ooh. He's versus good. Hitler. Who would you rather day drink with? Would you rather? Would I'd you go like, Hitler you know, yeah. because either Pol Pot or Mussolini would still be living in that. Why do I always get compared to Hitler? But Hitler gets all the, he's all, it's always, you know, Hitler's always cast a, a big bitterness. shadow. Yeah. Big shadow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everyone gets compared to Hitler, no matter what presidential God, candidate it is. Man. You know, Hitler did the same thing in 1939. I did it in 73 better. 
Wait, what about Pol Pot? How come Pol Pot's <laughs> never the guy? Hitler. <laughs> yeah, so you, you wouldn't want to sit through that fucking agony. No, go for Day Hitler. drinking yeah, of, yeah. Mm, it's always Hitler. It's never me. It's always Hitler. <laughs> Just let it go, man. Let's have just have cocktails. It's a sunny day. <laughs> you both killed a lot of humans, man. It's all right. It's cool. You had your reasons. Fine. <laughs> your uniforms were better, Hitler. Yeah, they were great, man. I was gonna do, uh, do Joan Rivers or Roseanne, but I've day drank with Roseanne and Joan Rivers. By the time this comes out, who knows? <laughs> Inappropriate. <laughs> Well, right now you could drink twice as much if you did drink with Joan Rivers. <laughs> I'm drinking for two. <laughs> you get hers. Uh, the lady ordered it's these, fun. but she hasn't come back from the restroom. Another round, please. She likes pop off. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> we had a fucking list going a mile long of. Chime in with your, uh, and remember when you, if you're gonna tweet these at me, and at HD Fatty, that's Chad Shanks, HD Fatty with a Y. Yeah, uh, make sure you know the game. It has to be a difficult choice, and you have to understand it's day drinking. And if you don't day drink, you wouldn't even appreciate this game. It ain't just drinking. Oh, that's one we talked about. Oh shit! When we talked about the other night when we were drunk was uh, from the Stern Show, Beetlejuice or Eric the Midget. Oh yeah, yeah, that's uh. <laughs> oh, that's tough. Well, it's Beetlejuice if he has a handler. Well, actually, it's either of them if they have a handler. Yeah, Eric, you'd, you'd have to help him pee and stuff. I don't. <laughs> To be maintenance yeah, at all. And, yeah. yeah, and he's such a small lad that <laughs> Stern. I, I'm trying to match Stern up with someone. Hmm. Stern was like Stern would be someone that I, I would have a hard time hanging out with one on one. Like that's not when you were asking me on the last podcast. Yeah. People oh. I'd want to meet. Stern was the guy that I wanted to do. That like if there if I had a choice of a Letterman or a Carson, I would be Stern. Was that was the fucking sure. apex, right? Uh, but he's also a guy that I would be really uncomfortable around because you would assume he's going to be uncomfortable around exactly. you. Well, no yeah, matter who almost, you it's are. almost like uh, well, Letterman or Carson or people uh, or I'm trying to think of uh, you know actors or, or people who have no personally out personality outside of their gig they're just they're sort of they just fall off and sit there yeah well he's very open about the fact that he's basically like me he hides at home yeah he's not out cutting a rug (laughs) yes and he doesn't know how to talk to people at parties and i'm that guy unless i know you yeah but he seems socially awkward and and would you want to but you know would you want to hang out with howard stern and, and get him drunk in the day and have him come out a little bit and find him. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to have think, an or. I mean, I'm trying to think or, of the or that would be uh, not offensive. Like you could Larry King or there's, there's uh, right. Or, no, no. Actually, no. Letterman is a great one because Letterman yeah. doesn't seem like he has any social Nothing skills going whatsoever. That's nor true. would he want to be with that's you. True. Right. So no, he doesn't like Letterman or tell. Stern. That's a good one. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. I would go Letterman on because I was a fan since I was a kid, and and yeah, I'd, I'd go. I can see yeah. Letterman loosening up, drinking, but not I can much. See, uh, Stern getting as paranoid drinking as I do smoking weed. <laughs> I'm gonna go Letterman. I'm, I'm yeah. also I'm gonna go Letterman as I'll well, Letterman. just because yeah. I think he, Stern tells a lot of his stories already. You know, like he's real transparent. Letterman's gonna have some fucking good yeah, he's day got drunk some skeletons stories that are gonna yeah. come out. Yeah, and then let me yeah, tell you I this: fucked her. <laughs> really, you <laughs> fucked her? Works for me, but what the hell? <laughs> Then I had to tell people. Uh, <laughs> <sorry. laughs> All right, so yeah, fucking tweet us with your uh, who would you rather day drink with tweets. It's a long hashtag, I guess. Day drink. Yeah. No, because it's just saying two names. Day so. drink versus. Yeah. <laughs> who like, would... You're good at this. Yeah, you should. You should be on social media. Thank you, sir. I'm very social. You were very social last <laughs> night, as minute. were we all. Oh. Fucking Steve Drew said oh words, and they were smart. Wow. He never says anything. He came out with Immanuel Kant and, and he blew me away, that and guy. 
He's a very smart motherfucker, man. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. I knew he was real smart. For a guy who sits at home just reading textbooks and counting bullets. <laughs> and he used to be a sniper. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> it's good you get out. Chad, Chad could take him under his wing. It's okay, little buddy. Not everyone has to die every day. <laughs> Let the women and children go. It's okay. Oh, the point of the story, uh, and I mentioned it in the, in the last podcast, uh, is uh, no one beats Bill Murray. If you can come up with a guy that wins the game, mm. Bill Murray wins against everybody. In every way. It's, in the yeah. day-drinking game. Yeah. No, this, I, I've no who else would you, I mean... Well, I can't think of anybody. I, oh, that's, he's a fucking... Oh, man. This, is, this, this is one that will start fights on Twitter, uh... Is the character the Big Lebowski versus the character Arthur? Wait, wait, the dude from the Big the Lebowski. Dude, right, the right. dude, right? Because the Big Lebowski. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's you right. Got you're, for, you're for right. fans, you got it. Now. Yeah, the dude <laughs> Don't or fuck with Arthur? The nomenclature. <laughs> Not actually Dudley Moore or I mean, what's his name? Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. But the the character the dude Arthur or, or the character Arthur. the dude, and I go Arthur just because he's wicked funny. It's fucking hilarious. I'm hearing you. Yeah. And he's picking up the tab. And he's not stoned. Johnny Depp style. He's picking up the tab. Did I drop that name again? <laughs> Have you mentioned Johnny Depp in the last? No, we did. Good. Good. It's yeah. funny you bring it up because. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Johnny Depp. <laughs> I think Johnny Depp would rather hang out with the dude. <laughs> All right. Johnny Depp and who? Day drinking. Brad Pitt. Yeah. Ah, those are both big stars. Super stars. Yeah, sure. I don't know. I think I'd rather hang out with Johnny Depp. He seems more cool. First of all, yeah, there's, I don't think there's a, anyone on that level that you can yeah. see. It's, that got really awkward, like, all of a sudden. Like, I couldn't imagine myself hanging out. Maybe if Stan Hope was there day drinking, I could get used to it. Otherwise, I'd be the most <laughs> awkward fucking guy at that So you're intimidated by Johnny sure. Depp? Well, not intimidated, but what the... I mean, I wouldn't... I call... I call... I, I, call, be able to I, I call Brendan Walsh and I go, uh, <laughs> Hey, I'm at Johnny Depp's house. <laughs> And then I talked to him for a minute about it because I was supposed to be flying out the next day and we delayed it three days. And uh, then about 20 minutes later, I called him and I go, I'm at Johnny Depp's house. And he goes, I was just saying that to someone. I go, oh, is this Brendan Walsh again? I, I guess I've already been through my entire phone. And I'm back, <laughs> I'm back to the bees. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Bingo sent me a picture of these guys. We took Johnny oh. Depp to Target. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, the pictures of... We stayed at the Standard in New York, which is... Uh, it's over the High Line, whatever. It's this walking thing that used to be a train track or something. It looks like an old place. Meat, Older. meat packing district. Well, it's all windows looking down on this place that these people congregate. And it's evidently known as an exhibitionist's outpost because you can just stand in the you know windows that are floor to ceiling so we had big like the first day i'm telling her like people are looking up they can see you because she always walks around naked she's like i don't care i'm like i don't know if that's legal <laughs> <laughs> or just tacky <laughs> yeah well then we heard it was like that and so we woke up drunk one morning Carlos we woke, Valencia. We woke was, up drunk. By the way, <laughs> well, me and Carlos Valencia crashed on my couch. He doesn't know the fucking Bisbee rules. You guys fu fall asleep. I encourage you to not drive drunk here, but you right. know to get the fuck out as soon as you wake up. <laughs> now it's one o'clock in the afternoon, and Carlos is still there. I'm, I woke up going, "Thank God, Carlos is not here." And Bingo goes, "He's still here. He's under that blanket." I'm like, "Ah, oh, fuck!" I just said that really loud. <laughs> but the last thing I remember saying to him when we in New York, fucking a, a a hotel room is is solitary confinement. The fucking yes, yeah, every yeah, it's six by eight, yeah, six by eight. And this kind has of a, thing, a couch yeah. that your feet are almost touching that we let him sleep on. Mm -hmm. But then Bingo's up naked, and we see people looking up, and we're like, oh, we should just do this for fun. So we had her stand naked in the window waving at people and went, went downstairs and took pictures from the high line, which is a long walk to actually get outside and down to the stairway to the high thing. And then we came back up and we found a chipmunk mask. Let's do it again with a chipmunk mask. This is hilarious. We could have done that all day had we continued drinking. 
But then finally security came to the door and said, ma'am, I think your shades are open. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. But it's wicked funny. Find those pictures on Twitter. I saw. That's where I saw it was on Twitter. Fucking hilarious. A couple of people said, is that, <laughs> that a... Is that a girl? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a girl, my girlfriend. <laughs> I, when I first saw it, I just texted Bingo a big long string of ha, 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 ha. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple minutes later, I get a text back, and she says, uh, Chipmunk mask? And I just texted <laughs> back. I said, yep. <laughs> she texts me a couple minutes later and says, Can you tell I'm naked? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you don't realize how obvious it is like people are until you go downstairs and you're like oh that's it yeah like, ah this is probably some promotion by the hotel for pr people are going yeah yeah you're right <laughs> oh shit so aside from uh aside from uh power washers which have been getting under your skin obviously what else have you been... Yeah, rile them up. I need to go get a, what else, a pack what of else cigarettes. Been, uh, what else have you been... Uh, about? Anything? No, just the same type shit as Stanhope. I had a phone company deal. Go through the same shit. Talk to India. Yeah. And is it India or is it that they're not helpful? No, they're just not helpful. Even right. Because I finally got through... I realized with CenturyLink, anybody has CenturyLink, you can ask for some somebody who is stateside. Really? And they'll, they transfer you. Okay. Or, right. or they think you're a dick and they hang up on you and make you start all the way over again. Those are the two options. That well, I've realized do. It's, a, it's a do it yourself culture. I mean, you have to really be vigilant about everything you're doing. You can't just call a company and go, uh, you know, which is frustrating. So you, what do you, I mean, you live at the end of a dirt road and you don't go out. And so what's there to be mad about? <laughs> oh, you're gonna do the okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't like to be this way. I, I, okay. I'm aware of th that I'm this way, I, and I don't. I don't like it. Right. But I'm. When you say this way, you mean easily enraged? Uh, yeah. Yep. Somewhat, I guess. This is why I've been trying to talk him into doing stand-up comedy. Because not only is he always fucking funny. Oh my god! Yeah. But it's such an outlet for that kind of. I mean, Rage that has you can't punch the guy in the face. Louis That's Black does nothing but scream. I mean, almost nothing. But I, remember, I, I, I mean, we drunkenly yeah. talked about this the other night. I, I I think I'd be willing to try open mic for therapy if I was in the right mood for it. For therapy, the problem is open mic doesn't always go well. Well, I don't <laughs> there's a reason it. there's so few comics, and it's but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't expect it to, but but it gives you a, a an outlet for that just fucking pounding hate that you get just at the the powers that be, all these things that you have no control about. People suck in the world. Everything sucks in the world if you're looking at it like that, and if you can make it into a joke, it fucking releases all that hate. Because right. I, I, we probably talked about this on a podcast. I had all the earmarks of a serial killer growing up. <laughs> like, I did all those things that serial killers do as kids. Right. And you wonder, like, w would I have just started killing people at some point if I didn't find a way to make this into a career? <laughs> so, yeah, we have the same hate. You should write some jokes. When you first went on stage, it was to make jokes, not to vent. Right. At what it point? To, yeah, to r tell jokes to get pussy. Yeah, I, I, but well, <laughs> well that's, everyone that's has their wrote. thing. That's why I started writing was to yeah yeah. But but he has I a mean, giant dick. <laughs> you could write. I yeah. could tell jokes. There you I go. Couldn't throw off a ball. But when did it get to the point of venting? When pussy didn't matter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> And all those reasons I got into comedy, like all it, like all those kids I hated in school when I was the fucking weird kid, mm -hmm. and I don't even remember who they are anymore. And it, now you're getting pussy, and you, wow, I still feel like I want someone should pay. <laughs> <laughs> and I started reading more, and you know, being more aware of you know horrible things on the planet. Rather than what song should I try to sing at karaoke? <laughs> <laughs> I would go my way. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, I detached from things in general for the uh, for the same reason. I couldn't control it, but it was making me. Now you were in the army. I was in the army, and you were okay with that. You kind of no the army. I had is that where you started to. They, that that was where I got diagnosed as having anger type problems. Yeah, first, <laughs> and uh, but I didn't kick, get kicked out of the army or anything for it. I just had to attend. No, they encouraged it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, they try to channel you in the right way. They try to channel you into killing You're people. You're a hater. Hey, let's I'm put you in the place. You away. <laughs> when I was in high school, before I before I joined the army, I tried to join the Marine Corps, and they turned me away because I had had too many assault charges. <laughs> I don't fucking understand that. You're their guy. Don't you guys kill people? I'm pretty sure I'm who you're looking for. You know, that's me <laughs> over here. Look me. I have. I'm. I'm a psychopath, but I have just enough awareness that I'm not going to cause you any trouble. Right. I. Yeah. I hold off pulling the trigger because in my head I say just if not justified. Not justified. Not <laughs> just justified. Pop, tap, tap, tap. And then I know that when it goes to court, we're not going to be in Makes trouble. Makes for an interesting day at St. Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Ferguson calling. Chad Shank, line one. Ferguson calling. And that's yeah. why I don't become a cop. Because that oh, those yeah. guys yeah. are yeah. dicks. Yeah. Plus, you'd have to cut your hair. and It's beautiful hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and grow a mustache and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I can't grow a mustache. This is the best I can do. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> I gotta get fucking, uh, Hail Satan is a friend of ours. Thank God he has a weird nickname, but, uh, he's a St. Louis cop. And I, I, if I had the time, I'd fly out there. You might have met him here. No, but I've heard you talk about it. He, were, he was, I, Saint Louis? remember the two cops, good cop, bad cop, yeah, that yeah. came out? Sure. The first yeah. time the cops showed up at our Super Bowl party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, all of a sudden, I think the cops are gonna go talk, cop talk to the cops. They go, right. oh, we're cops too. We're, uh, oh, they fucking hid. They hid. You, you goddamn cowards. You made me deal with the cops. Your guns are in my safe. Uh, yeah, that, that'd that be a fun one. I've got to avoid... I, I, somehow, I was on the road heavy during a lot of that, so I didn't realize how big it had gotten. What, Ferguson? Uh, Ferguson. It got huge in a weird way, and I wasn't even... Uh... Think about like Missouri, who cares? You know, I mean, really, it's just, uh, but it became this, uh, sort of bellwether for, uh, police brutality. And now you see a lot of things on Facebook about, uh, police brutalizing people and having more cameras and you can film cops and all that kind of stuff. And, and I, you know, I used to cover cops in Chicago. I was a police report in Chicago and they were the uh, Chicago cops. Are the worst motherfuckers. Most corrupt they're police station horrible. in America. And, and, but they, uh, would give me shit. As Did a I reporter. just say police station? Police department. Police anyway, department. Go ahead. But they would, they would protect me, you know, at certain times. And I felt like it was sort of like, oh, Louis from the mob likes you. <laughs> yeah. It's like Hunter S. Thompson <laughs> with hanging out with the Hells Angels. Exactly. Until oh. they turn on you. Exactly. Yeah, cops are yeah. great. Yeah. They're great until, but anytime I pulled over by a cop, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm always polite. I always say, sir, I'm never solicitous. I'm never, uh, you know, give a story, but just be a person. And I, and I, what I think of cops is that they have a blue collar job. It's a blue collar job, but you get a gun, which is different than a plumber or, or, uh, whatever. You know, oh, you don't guy. just get a gun. You, know, you the, get all the toys. All if you the read, dollars. here's yeah. a plug. This is yeah. a sponsorship. Radley Balco's book. I don't know if I gave it to you. Oh, I read it. Yep. I, maybe I gave it to you. It's uh, the rise of the warrior cop. Yeah, the right. militarization, militarization of the police force. And you give these guys all these fucking toys. All they want to do is use yeah. them. Yeah. You know, tasers and fucking. Even in Bisbee, you look at they have SUVs, which we have no reason to have. And, and you look at the setup in there and it looks like the Starship Enterprise or something. I mean, there's shit. War games, lights yeah. going on. It's crazy shit. I mean, it's guys who play video games or something. And so you're always polite to cops. You're always honest because if you lie, you're in trouble just for the lie. You know, it's like Nixon or something, but you're in trouble you know, if cops want you to be in trouble. You can't go through a day without breaking a law. And I agree. But it also is. cops are the first people you call when you're in trouble. Because you have to call a cop. You right. can't fucking kill the guy yourself. Right. Well, we're that, in Arizona. We that, can't. I, that's but. my, I fucking hate that. Ex I, I, 
uh, one of those Twitter things where someone said exact, oh, but yeah, that's the first people you call when you're in trouble and you can't put the diatribe into 140 characters where you go, you don't have the right. You would be arrested if you tried to take the law into your own hands. Mm -hmm. You have to call a cop. I don't want to call a cop. Uh I'd rather fucking settle this with fucking a fucking uh, wink and a nudge to Chad Shank who needs some (laughs) tent money. I need a new pressure washer. A new pressure washer. (laughs) By the way, I, I didn't call if the you cops have a pressure washer. my pressure washer was stolen for that very reason. <laughs> right. I don't want the cops to come out there and deal with it. No. Because then other uh, it's shit It's gone happens. anyway. Right. And I don't want the cops out there. And if I come across who took it, I don't want the cops to be, ever have been involved. Yeah. Well, so, who's... <laughs> so what do you do he? when you can't trust the cops? It really, what do you do? do you, you don't get in trouble. Yeah. You... you d- well... You know, your tail lights out, you didn't know about it or whatever. Then don't have fucking weed in your car. I, I yeah. did a bit right. about that. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. No. It's a bit, thank God. Oh, Australia dates. I didn't plug those. <laughs> it's great. There's a chunk from that I had to cut out from that last CD. I had to cut out 25 minutes, the last special, mm-hmm. because I had to fit it into a, roughly an hour. And uh, that's one of the bits that now I can do in Australia because you're not tired of it and I haven't burned it on a DVD. <laughs> so, so, so I have less trepidation going to Australia than I would the UK where they memorized every word I've ever thought. And when it, uh, I already heard that, mate. <laughs> but yeah, dr- don't, if you're going to be a criminal, don't fucking advertise it. But most criminals are stupid. So they'll yes. have the tail light out. They won't do the, you know, because, well, I really didn't check my car on the meth and, and, you know, all that stuff. So, and they get in trouble for the small thing that leads to the big thing, hopefully, you know. But, so you're saying stupidity is what perpetuates the economy. I think Let's, most, I think most stupid people, most people in jail are stupid. And, and they might not be criminals. Most of them are. But to them, they're not. But, but they're when criminals dumb. take they're it dumb. on as a personality, Stup- that's what bothers yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. That where that's my thing. I'm a criminal, and look at me. I'm a, well. Then don't bitch yeah. about the cops fucking with you. They have a job, and they might be abusive at it. You have a job is to avoid them. Don't go. <laughs> exactly. I'm over here. It's cat and mouse. I've, I've hung out with a lot of people that are exactly what you're talking about, and usually what it boils down to is that they can't function outside. So they function better just being locked up. Somebody can take care of them. They don't know what to do if they're out. So it's better to do, oh, I'm a criminal. Look at me and go and get, as soon as you get out, get back in. That's their persona. That's who they become to themselves. Yeah. Right. Which is another reason the prison system doesn't work. It makes you a worse person. No, you, you go into prison and you learn. If you're not much of a criminal beforehand, by gosh, you will be when you get out. Well, or if you you're know? not much of anything... It's an easy way, you know, if you don't have a high aspirations, you get taken care of. It's almost like get... the opposite, the people who stay in school forever. And now I'm getting my doctorate because yeah. they can't function outside of a fucking classroom. Right. They or just academia. keep perpetuating their education because they don't want to go out into the real world. Which is their persona to right. themselves. Yeah. Right. right. Only they're not fucking dangerous. I guess you could make the argument, yes, they are. They're the ones who learn how to make nuclear bombs or or well, whatever your that. dumb argument is. <laughs> so when, when Plastic the last... bag ban. It's just Sorry, this <laughs> does segue. Yeah. In Bisbee, they banned plastic bags through the city council, mm-hmm. and it's uh, arguable whether it was legal that they could do it without putting it to a vote or some shit. Either way, I like the plastic bag ban. I just don't like the fact that it had to be a law. Like, couldn't you just get fucking Safeway to agree to not do that? I hate that they have to have <laughs> a law, but then that's the whole problem with libertarianism. But you're dealing you're with a corporation who will do nothing in, unless it's in their own interest. You're counting on the decency of people, where as much as most criminals are stupid, most people are fucking slobs and they still throw shit out. And that's why the fucking cactuses are covered in plastic bags is because people are slobs. So do you have to have a law? Maybe you do. That's why I've waffled on libertarianism because well, you same can't believe the, people are just inherently good. A seatbelt ban and, you know, other laws that people tried it without it for a long time until they realized there was a need for it. Generally, well, not, not no. in particular. Well, no, seatbelt. Right. That's a, that's random taxation. That's a way they can fucking charge you money. You know, 
you're not no one's getting a fine for having a plastic bag. That's really for the environment. Right. It's it's not like the paper bag lobby has come into Bisbee. Seatbelts actually save lives. And before but, 19, that's whatever, not, not there were no seatbelts in cars. It's not like you see dead bodies splayed across the cactus like you do plastic bags. You want to fucking go through a windshield, go through it. Just because some EMT has to you know clean that up, that's your job, gig. Well, and uh, we always come to the same conclusion when we talk to this stuff every time. You have a certain percentage that's going to be a douchebag and throw their stuff out no matter what. Mm -hmm. Like you said, this used to work. There didn't used to be this many people. When you get more people, your percentage of douchebag goes up. Every single argument we have yep. or every train of thought always boils down to overpopulation. There yes. Is. Did I mention babies on airplanes? That would segue this right back to a fucking air. I, just it was a morning hate thing. <laughs> I was going to bring up I, that awkward pause when we were talking about airlines. And I go, I was going somewhere with this is uh, morning hate airline. I just, as soon as it starts at the ticket counter, builds a TSA, and then I have cocktails, and that doesn't always help. And I got bumped up on United because I'm a frequent flyer, and Bingo did not. So I, you know, I usually, if we're traveling together, we trade off. Okay, next upgrade is yours. So she got first class, and I sat next to the middle seat, had a woman with a, a crawling toddler, like screaming, but also enough arms to like, just touch and grope me. <laughs> and I wanted to walk up to the, and say, listen, I'm being inappropriately touched by the person next to me. <laughs> Should have videoed it. Yeah. It's, I, I'm, I'm still drunk when I get on the fucking plane. This is, that was a long trip. New York to LA to San Francisco. And every night is some fucking weird shit happening. And now I'm, I'm fucking just sweaty and drunk and that goddamn thing. And I, I walked up to my seat after I go, baby, you take the first class seat. And I'm like w the first row of coach where she can see me and she sees me and I see the baby. And I, I, I like, like I was theater acting went, Jesus Christ. No, please. No, like audibly loud, stinking drop. <laughs> and when the thing had touched me, I'd go, God damn it, don't touch me. I didn't say fuck. Like, <laughs> I'm like, get out of there. I'm leaning over into the aisle, like away from its reach. Like, <laughs> bad touch by a baby. <laughs> it just, that shouldn't, you shouldn't be allowed to do that. I can't, I can't talk about it on stage because it's hackneyed. If you have a fucking baby, don't put it on a fucking plane. If you do, what you're saying is, I don't give a shit how many people's trips. I ruin because this baby needs to be in Denver. Your baby doesn't need to be in Denver. I was a baby. I never had a fucking reason <laughs> that I needed to be in Denver. I didn't fly till I was 18 because my parents were decent people. Yes, your fucking baby's going to ruin people's flights. Why does it need to be there? Fucking Aunt Kelly is what? Having a thing. Make Aunt Kelly fly to you. She doesn't scream or touch people inappropriately. That thing was so fucking all. I, I did the whole full on eye mask, Bose <laughs> headphone, put a blanket over me, and then it's still, ah, you can hear it through the fucking Bose. Ah, and then it's touching me. I'm like, stop the thing. Stop it. I was, yeah. And you go, I'm a cunt flyer. No, you are, <laughs> have so, so little compassion for your fucking fellow human being. Oh, shit. <clears throat> but you're, you're talking about, um, you know, when people have money, when they first get money, the first thing they do is, and this is true down the thing, they move away from people. Talk about overpopulation. They move to, well, it's a gated community or it's a, a long dirt road. With a gate. Anyway, that's you. But, or they buy an island. Oh, as soon as Chad Shank got that but, fucking <laughs> nest saying, egg, he's hiding. When, when, any, when anybody has the, the mark, the mark of, of sort of success is to get the fuck away from people. No one moves to the inner city. Uh, <laughs> I will counterpoint big, with you know? New York really? City and Manhattan. Okay, go. In, in, a, in they own the whole floor and they don't have to interact with anyone. They have a private elevator and they have to talk to anybody and they get into a Cadillac or whatever it is, and they get to their place without having to interact with the city, they're in their own little island, basically in that place. 
but they're, right. they're, they're isolated. It can be done, the thing but is I mean, to it would be, away be difficult. From people. I'm but definitely grateful away from people. of my situation where I'm and truly I isolated. A, I have I mean, a house just, tucked away yeah. in Old Bisbee where no one knows it's there. And I am so grateful for that. I've never even been invited to your house, but you know I don't go out. <laughs> I've invited you. You haven't right. arrived. Yeah. But but the point is that the first thing you do when you have some 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 whatever is to get the fuck away from people because there's so many of them. I I did. Well, no, I well I moved to L.A. first to try to get noticed. Yeah. And I once you get. To a point where you don't want anyone to notice you, <laughs> you realize that you're a bag of shit. <laughs> you moved to Bisbee, Arizona, and you put up a. You know what's weird about this town and... is there's not really many kids here. Children, I mean, there you must mean. be children. You yeah, mean? like there, like this is a kind of neighborhood. Like when we grew up, you'd play kickball in the streets and stuff, yeah. and you don't see many kids out. I think it's probably because kids do shit inside now, like play video games. Right. So they're probably around. You just don't see them, but you just don't see kids, which is fantastic. Yeah, I think kids just don't play kickball and ride bikes and shit. Do your kids more. go outside, or uh, they? My kids are grown, but when but they the, were when little, they... they did. Yeah. Yeah, did that. Uh, you never hear. Occasionally, you hear a, a bit of a ruckus over on Black Knob, but I went to uh, when I was in uh, Kampala in Uganda. Uh, the first thing I noticed was there were children out playing. Like, let's everywhere. back up a second and uh, explain why you're in Kampala, Uganda. Oh, I was doing research on a book. You were doing coke so, with Idi yeah. Amin. Did I tell you that? Once I met Hunter, it just he said, escalated. Idi Amin, he's a crazy fuck. You think you have good you coke. you got a party You're with him. You're going to go to Kampala. <laughs> this was just a couple of weeks ago. You didn't sign your Ebola waiver <laughs> before we sat down with Alex? <laughs> Let me breathe on you. Let me bleed on you. Hold on. Um, but no, I, I actually, and I hadn't noticed it was missing until I got there and I heard children out playing and i realized uh both living in tucson and in i before that I'd lived in richmond virginia and other places but you never heard kids out when i was a kid we're always out we're playing stuff and uh you know whatever street hockey and stickball and god i sound old um <laughs> <laughs> but people were out and now they're not so much and, and maybe they're in playing video games i don't know what they do i don't know netflix watching the movies Porn. Kids are all watching porn now. Porn. All HD on porn. the porn hub or the red <laughs> porn or the tu- tube smut. <laughs> oh, the old tube smut. <laughs> the old tube smut. <laughs> Henry Phillips says, the tube smut movie. There's <laughs> a, a comic named Drew Hastings who's really funny, and you guys know Henry Phillips. Mm-hmm. And he's such a like technophobe, and he hates all the social networking shit and he's an old guy and so Henry just to fuck with him he's like yeah, I finally got a Twitter account and he's like oh Twitter that's kind of yeah no one really uses Twitter anymore <laughs> everyone's on Chumster do you have a Chumster account he's like I don't have a Chumster account I'm not getting a Chumster account <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Chumster that was a great Henry Phillips too that was good <laughs> That's a that's an impression of Mike McRae doing an impression of Henry Phillips, just like uh, Christopher Walken. One guy did a Christopher Walken, and then everyone else that does a Walken is doing that impression of the Christopher Walken. Yeah. So yeah, that's Mike McRae's. Yeah, uh, I can't do it now. Have you heard uh, Gene Connors' Christopher Walken? Have you heard Have you heard anything? But Christopher Walken. <laughs> okay, from, he does it a lot. Yeah. He yeah, told yeah. me, he just told he me, he uh, Gene Connors is our councilman. <laughs> he's we call him our congressman, uh, our congressman, but right. he's our city councilman. Right. He's cool as fuck. Senator. Yeah. Fucking yeah. good looking, white haired uh, man. Spencer Tracy looking. Unbelievable. Yeah. No. Fucking strong dude. Should be mm-hmm. mayor. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And he, uh, he just told me, he came over the other night and told me that he, he actually did stand up in Chicago for a while. Did he really? He did sketch I didn't know comedy. That. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, he breaks out his Christopher Walken as anytime he gets a chance, <laughs> <laughs> which is always funny when you don't expect it. If a comic's doing Christopher Walken, you want to fucking bull rush him off the stage. But if your city councilman stops over for a cigarette, that's going. Yeah. He hey, busts out well, Christopher yeah. Walken. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> It's a tough impression. You know? All right. I think that's a podcast again. Any other hate you want to throw in this? 
I think Chad needs oh, more good. hate. I had sure? lots of hate, but then I had so much fun podcasting with Alex that uh, you're, all my you're hate okay on your hate? It always seemed like a good vibe. I don't need to spew any hate. Citibank, you can go fuck yourselves, and I know that's not going to hurt you on any level, anywhere. And that's why I fuck. I've had the CEO's name. I did this with uh, MCI back when they were a phone company before Bernie Ebers went to prison. <laughs> the CEO of MCI, Henry Phillips yeah. and I both got our first cell phones from MCI and we had a no roaming, no whatever package. And then we get our first bills for like seven or $800, <laughs> like double our rent. And then you try to call MCI customer service and they just wouldn't answer. I one time literally on hold for two hours and 45 minutes before I finally hung up. You couldn't get anyone on the phone. So I just found Bernie Ebers, the CEO, his number, and I just called his office every day. This is Doug Stanhope. I need to talk to Bernie. Is he around? <laughs> they go, what's this regarding? It's personal. He knows. Just <laughs> And then you put me on hold. Uh, he's not available. Can I take a number? And I give him my number, and then I call the next day. Yeah, Bernie, around this Doug Stanhope again. Just I, I we probably missed uh, <laughs> call. And I did this up until he had his fucking assistant dude call me and go, "Why are you leaving all of these messages?" And I told him, "You fucked me over. You don't have customer service. You know it. There's no one that answers those phones, and you're fucking me and my friend over. And I'm not paying this bill." And he said. Eventually, after a couple of calls with him, we're going to forgive the bill. I go, I want it in writing. I'm not going to do that. Well, you fucked me over when I signed this contract, and now you're trying to fuck me and my credit for all this money, which I don't owe, and I can't. So why would I take your word out? Well, you're just going to have to take my word. And then a couple of years later, Bernie Ebers, fucking just like an Enron situation, he's still in prison to this day. So, you know what? You know what? Next time uh, someone fucks you over the cable company, I found this guy when I said we're going to war with Citibank. I found the fucking CEO. I can't remember his name now. He's from fucking Connecticut. I know that. Uh, yeah. And that's where we're going. Just go straight to the top and harass their <laughs> fucking office of the top guy and f just, yeah, be relentless. Don't talk to, don't wait for a supervisor. Find the CEO. Find out where he lives. And yeah, mail him letters. <laughs> Call his house. Make friends with Anonymous. That's my, that's my, that's the end of this podcast. Who did I say we were sponsored by? The pot. The oh. pot? Oh, we have, uh, Chocolope. Chocolope. From the Green Pharmacy in Bisbee. Hey, grab yourself a nice warm plastic jug of pop of, smoke some Chocolope. And forget the whole thing ever happened. <laughs> Good night. This is the Doug Stano podcast. All my dates are up uh, on my website, Austin, San Jose, Philly, D.C., Australia, and a whole Midwest run in October. I think Chicago's in there, Columbia, Missouri, everywhere. I'm fucking everywhere. Find me. Play the Matoid. time. <laughs> Party time, party time.
time, pass the 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 time. Hey! <laughs>